Hi hey everyone, today I'm going to talk about the chromatography of fluorine and how we can separate it from fluorinone. And we're going to talk a bit about TLC and how it can help us identify what we have in the mixture. And at the end I'm going to just talk a bit about the reaction itself, how can we get fluorinone from fluori and what like I'm gonna talk a bit about the catalyst, the phase transfer catalyst, and what's what is the purpose of that. Let's start by trying simply to explain what happens in the column itself. So first of all, the compound on the left is fluorine, which is like in the red here, but it's actually colorless. And the molecule on the right is fluorinone, which is actually yellow in real life. I should have drawn it in yellow but it's actually yellow in real life and in the column here just so we can explain it simply you have a stationary phase which is usually very polar it can be alumina or silica here i drew the alumina and as you can tell the stationary phase is very polar here you have aluminum connected to oxygen which is like a metal connected to a non-metal, which is considered a very polar bond. So the stationary phase is, is very polar. And of course you have your sample, which contains, like it's after the reaction has happened. So you have fluorinone, fluorinone, I'm sorry, and fluorine. And you add, you add the mobile phase, which is the solvent. And the more polar compound, which is fluorinone here, sticks more, let's say, sticks more to the alumina because, you know, polar likes polar and nonpolar likes nonpolar. So the fluorine will pass faster because it's less polar. So the fluorine will get out of the column faster. Now, choosing the solvent, like, how do we choose which, what should be our mobile phase? So it's, a, it's very tricky, but let's just make up two examples. Let's say the mobile phase is very polar, like ethanol or ethyl acetate. So if it was very polar, it will, so we said that polar attracts polar, so it will, like the mobile phase itself will attach itself to the stationary phase, which is the alumina, and it will compete with the polar compound, which is fluorinone here, and it can, like, let's say, take its place. You can think of it like that, it like takes its place, it takes its space. And that makes, that will lead to fluorinone and fluorine, of course. But fluorinone and fluorine will, like, they will both not stick to the stationary phase and they will just get out of the column faster and we will not have a good separation. And so the solution would be that we use a very nonpolar solvent, but that too will not be a good idea as well. Because if we use a nonpolar solvent, then the polar, the polar compound will take more time to come out. It, so it will stick to the stationary phase. As we said before, if we use a very polar solvent, it will compete with it and it will come out fast. But if we use a nonpolar solvent only, then the exact opposite will happen. So the polar, the polar compound will stick more to the alumina and it will take more time for it to come out. So the perfect solution would be using a mixture. Usually we start by adding a nonpolar 
solvent so we can get our nonpolar compound out first and then we use more polar solvent so in this lab that's why we use first petroleum ether first because it's nonpolar and then after a while we use our like just a bit more polar solvent which is methylene chlor chloride or another solvent that is just a bit more polar than petroleum ether okay so the fluorine will come out and then the fluorinone will come out after that actually what happens so here like we you have the solvent okay and here you put the paper the dlc paper and of course you said here you have the reference sample and here you have the actual sample so it's like the column chromatography but like i think of it backwards so here the solvent will go up and you wait until the solvent like you don't wait until it reaches the top but let's say you wait until it reaches here like one centimeter far from the top so let's say it reaches here And then you and then you take the paper out and you wait a bit and then you look at it and the reference sample which contains like you know it contains fluorine and fluorinone from the start so you will see say a dot here and a dot here and from your sample you see something similar like this okay what does that tell us so it's the same thing as we said the polar compound which is the fluorinone will stick more to the alumina or silica whatever the paper like the tlc paper has it like on it what is what is it made of usually it's silica but it doesn't doesn't matter the stationary phase is polar so the fluorinone will go up higher or it will be lower so because it's polar and it sticks to the paper the solvent will not bring it up as much as the fluorine so the fluorinone will be lower this will be our fluorinone and the second dot which is higher it will be the fluorine and that's how you can tell that you have the product and the reactant like you have fluorinone and fluorine and during the column chromatography how can you tell when the fluorine has completely like gone like into your Erlenmeyer and how can you know if you have fluorinone in it so you use a TLC paper to, to test if you have fluorinone in in the mixture so if you have fluorinone that's how you know that you will stop and change the Erlenmeyer Okay, so as we can see here, we have the fluorine. For this reaction to happen, we need to take a hydrogen from the fluorine. And of course, only a base can do that. So that's the purpose of the OH- or our base. The problem is that our base is ionic, it's sodium hydroxide, and it prefers to be soluble in the aqueous layer. It's soluble in the aqueous layer, so it prefers to be there. So as we can see here, our phase transfer catalyst, which is quaternary amine, it's positive, but it's also connected to four 
groups which are which like would prefer to be in the organic layer because it's as you can see it's a long hydrocarbon chain chain so it prefers also to be in the organic layer but it also has a positive charge which allows it to be in the aqueous layer so while it is in the aqueous layer it, it wants a negative ion so let's just say it takes the hydroxide like it holds the hydroxide ion hand and it takes it like it takes the ion with it to the organic layer so it facilitates the transfer of the hydroxide ion which prefers to be in the aqueous layer but it facilitates its transfer to the organic layer so it can take hydrogen from the fluorine and then after we take the hydrogen the oxidation begins with the element, elemental hydro, elemental oxygen sorry and that's what happens so this is all about the lab should know that I offer free organic chemistry and chemistry lessons on Skype. My username is in the description. So if you have any question or you need help in this in these subjects, you can tell me about it and I would gladly try to help. Good luck.